I've always found indoor variations of outdoor sports such as arena football, futsal and pedal tennis to be really fascinating. So in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to the rules of my indoor AFL alternative, which I'm calling AFAL or Australian Football Arena League. And we'll also go through how this sport differs from other versions of indoor footy you've seen before. So the idea of this really is to try and create a professional version of Aussie rules footy that can be played in the summer in enclosed air conditioned arenas. So let's start with the playing field. AFAL is played on a rectangle shaped field that will fit inside of most arenas, similar to basketball or ice hockey. There'll be four goalposts at each end with a wall surrounding the playing field, again, similar to ice hockey. The playing field will be divided into three sections, forward, midfield, and back. Now let's talk about the players and the teams. Each team will be made up of four players. One forward, one defender, and two midfielders, with one of those midfielders also serving as kind of a ruckman in centre bounces. Plus a certain number of interchange players for rotation. While players must start in these positions, they're free to roam around the field throughout the game. Now let's get into the rules of the game and how it actually works. To dispose of the ball or pass to a teammate, players must handball the ball. The only time a player can kick the ball is when they're kicking from the defensive end of the field, forward. And you can't do little chip kicks around the defensive part of the field. If you've got the ball in your defensive end of the field and you choose to kick, you must go forward into either the midfield zone or the forward zone. When a player catches the ball, either from a kick or a handball, it's play on. There's no marks and no set shots. The game just keeps going. It's always play on. So how does scoring work? Well, it's pretty much the same as typical footy. A goal is worth six points and a behind is worth one point. A goal is scored when a player handballs the ball through the big goal post as long as the ball hasn't been touched. As we said before, you can't kick the ball and go through for a goal. And when the ball goes through in between the big goal post and the small point post, that is a behind, same as normal footy. If the ball hits either one of the goal posts or the behind posts and bounces back into play, that will be play on. When the ball goes through for a behind, possession will be awarded to the opposition and they will kick out from full back as per normal. And when a team scores a goal, the ball will go back to the center and you'll have a center ball up. So let's talk about tackling and contact in this version of the game. Full contact is allowed, including tackling and hip and shoulders. And of course, standard AFL contact rules apply. So no head high contacts, no tripping, no holding on, all that kind of stuff. Players can be pushed up against the side wall, but forceful shoving into the wall is not allowed. Now let's talk about free kicks or fouls or whatever you want to call them. When a player commits a foul or breaks a rule, the position will be awarded a free kick or in this version called a free pass. These are taken from the spot of the foul. So similar to typical footy where players can't be tackled when they have possession of the ball at a free kick or a free pass. If they move off their line or they take too long, then play on will be called, but otherwise they can't be tackled when taking a free pass. Again, with free passes, standard disposal rules apply. So you must handball the ball to get rid of it. You can't kick it away unless you're in the defensive half of the field kicking forward. So there's a couple of big difference between this and your more typical cool indoor footy. The big one being that you have to dispose of the ball via handball rather than kicking it. I did this because having watched a few indoor footy games, it's a, similar to AFLX when the AFL did that. If you kick the ball around the field, it makes it way too easy to go end to end in just like one or two disposals. And you don't really want that because it takes away any kind of contest. And that's the same reason why I've done the no marking and the constant play on rule is because if you can pass the ball and take a mark, the field is so small that it makes it very easy to just move the ball from one end to the other with no pressure. If you make it so you have to constantly play on, then you're always under pressure. It makes it a much higher intensity game. It adds a bit more of a challenge to moving the ball from one end of the field to the other. The third big difference is that the walls that surround the playing field are actually inbound. And in this version of the game, there's no real out of bounds. Again, from watching some indoor footy games and competitions, I think most leagues and comps go by the rule that some of the walls like the ones at either end of the field are kind of out of bounds but i much prefer to keep it again so that play is just constantly going on and the fourth major difference is that full contact and tackling is allowed in my version of the game now obviously most indoor footy comps don't allow this because they want it to kind of be a fun casual kind of league that anyone can play in to have you know mixed genders and all that kind of stuff which makes total sense my version of the game afal is intended more for like a professional setting with like full on athletes and you know men's and women's comps full contact and tackling is allowed and that's not a huge problem because you know this league I'm making is completely hypothetical so 
I can do what I want, really. So that's my idea for an arena version of Aussie Rules footy. Hopefully some or most of that made sense and you can kind of get your head around it. I think it could be a pretty fun game to play, pretty fun and entertaining to watch as well. But leave your thoughts and ideas down in the comments section below, guys. I'd love to hear any ideas you have or any thoughts you have about this version of the game that I've kind of created. And as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, we'll see you guys later.